So our second speaker is uh, Yuka Yujita, who is the Labor Administration and Labor Inspection Officer at the International Labor Organization in Geneva. Thank you, John. Good, good morning. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to be here representing the International Labor Organization. Through, uh, since yesterday, we talked about the safety and health of informal economy workers, but I recognize most of the approach discussed here was the health-oriented and uh, UHC, public health, and my position is a little bit different. But when I decided to go for the occupational health, I enter into this area from public health. And I serve as the occupational physician in several companies and hospital based on the public health aspect. But after I joined the ILO in 2003, uh, first few years, still I standed on that aspect. But gradually I recognized something wrong, something unfit. In the ILO, the safety and health of the workers is the, a part of the labor protection, a part of labor administration. Of course, it doesn't mean safety and health is ignored or neglected. But the approach is completely different. Our counterpart is not medical doctors or the nurses. Our counterpart is employers, trade union, or the labor inspection, labor inspectors, labor officers. And in the ILO, we have perhaps five or six medical doctors in the entire ILO. But most of the staff is economist or um, international labor relations or the social dialogue. So how can we push, how can we insist the, the importance of the safety and health of the workers? Perhaps we need to change the approach. So that's my introduction of my presentation. And you may see that now the occupation safety and health unit is merged, integrated with the labor administration, labor inspection unit. Before, we have the safe work, is the unit on safety and health. But after the, we have the new director general, Guy Ryder, he changed the, the structure of the ILO. And now we are merged with the another important uh, unit. So this is the introduction. And we have many, many tools on safety and health. By the way, in the ILO, we call it occupational safety and health, not occupational health and safety. So for us, the safety, and safety is first as prevention. And then outcome of the safety or the prevention is health. So it's the something different view or the aspect or approach. The first tool is, of course, we have the international labor standards. So far, we have almost 200 international labor standards, the conventions, but 60 or 70% of the standards more or less related to safety and health. And also, we have the, the lot of practical tools called the practice and guidelines, training materials, or the information, including the statistics and the estimates. OK. And we have uh, the two aspect dimensions of the approach to safety and health. The first one is the advisory support at the national level using the international labor standards, or, the, or we, we have the global strategy on safety and health adopted by the International Labor Conference in 2003. And also we have the many, many activities <coughs> at the workplace level, 
technical support at the workplace level for the, the workers and employers. Uh, based usually that kind of service is provided through the technical cooperation projects. And the important thing is the coordination between two levels. Of course, the, not only for the uh, policy level advice, and not only the technical advice for the workers, the, we need to coordinate and uh, uh, yes, arrange the good coordination between these two levels. And even talk about the, the WHO's approach, uh, first focus on the global level, and then the, how to implement the global tools at the uh, grassroots level. But today, I like to focus on the, our activities and our good practices at the workplace level. Uh, through the long years uh, experience in the ILO on safety and health, the support for the, the workers, we identified several keys to successful OSH program. First one is realistic goal setting in achieving good practices. Uh, the goal is must be realistic, feasible, practical, and we focus on good practice or good example found in the actual workplace. And second point is self-stepwise -step, action aiming at low-cost, no-cost solutions. Mirai already pointed the show as the very good example is the low-cost and no-cost. But this is a very important point, especially the workplace that, and, uh, of the small and micro-scale micro enterprises and informal economy workers. And third point is linked to increase of productivity and competitiveness. Otherwise, the employers or workers are not interested in safety and health. The when we talk about the safety and health, the first reaction from the employers are, no, 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 safety and health is very costly. We don't have any the money to, to invest or to provide to buy some PPEs or the, some other program or something. But it's not true. The safety and health is not the costly. So we need, and we need to focus or the stress the how the productivity can improve or increase by changing, improving the safety and health at workplace. And the fourth point is the measures to ensure sustainability. It's easy to provide the good program or the good project at the workplace level, but usually the project is the two year, three years time bound. And after the project, nothing left. Even if we provide a lot of good tools, the workers forget. Workers don't do that anymore. So we need to ensure how to ensure the sustainability. And then uh, we find out that some uh, particular measures, the, the methodology, so-called participatory action-oriented training. It's perhaps for the English speakers a bit strange naming because the, this approach is developed in Asia. So I don't know, I'm not a native speaker of English, is the little, uh, appropriate or not, but we call it participatory action-oriented training program, uh, in short, PAUT. And the steps to be taken of PAUT is very simple. First, the, the learning from local good practices. It's not instruction, it's not the training, just to share the information and good, good practices among workplaces, among workers. And uh, the good practice should be very simple and very easy to apply or the duplicate. And second steps is to check multiple areas jointly once the workers find out, oh, this is very good example, good practice, 
perhaps I can do it, the same thing or the similar thing. Then he or she, the workers, should walk through their own workplace and find out what they can do by, by, by themselves without any help from outside. What can they do? And then implement the simple improvement. We encourage to start from the very simple, very easy improvement. And once the worker can implement that improvement, we encourage them a very good idea, very good example. Why don't you continue and find out another improvement next? So the, the worker can start from the very simple one and step up to the next improvement. And also, as I said, the important thing is to confirm the benefit. What kind of outcome, what kind of benefit, what kind of impact of their improvement to their life or to their health, to their productivity, and then follow up those activities. So this is the, the flowchart. This is the steps of the PAUT program. And PAUT is a approach is applied to the many, many tools of the ILO. The WISE is the very famous work improvement in small enterprises. WISE is developed, was developed in Philippines in 1970. It's very, very uh, long time ago. And it started in Philippines and uh, is expanded to Southeast Asia. For example, the Thailand, uh, the, the WISE is applied as the national program at this moment. And the WISE folk, uh, target of the WISE is the small enterprises. And next, the WIND, work, work improvement in neighborhood development is, was developed in Vietnam in 1980s. And the focus, the target of this program is small scale family learning farmers. And after that, the many, many the programs are applied, the PAUD approach, which uh, work improvement in safe home, to focus on the home-based workers, uh, developed in Thailand. And actually, at that time, HomeNet Thai is our main counterpart to develop this program. So I'm looking forward to hearing some uh, your achievement on WISH to share information, please, later. WISCON is for the small construction site workers uh, developed in Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Indonesia. And WAM is the, for the waste cycling workers in informal economies in Fiji, and now split out in the Pacific. So as you see, these programs are applicable for the informal economy workers because the step is very simple and low cost, no cost. And uh, so I see you, the, uh, I show you a lot of good uh, achievement of those program. And the composition of PAUT is, this is the, the model of the program, training program. Usually it's the two days or three days program. Uh, the first is the very short orientation, the introduction. And the second, the all participants should go to see the one selected workplace nearby with the action checklist. And when they come back to the classroom, the, they are divided into the small group, five to six people, and discuss and find out three good points in their visited workplace, three good examples of the improvement on safety and health, and also three points to be improved in terms of safety and health. We didn't say bad example, the bad point, the points to be improved. And then they, they, they each group identify three and three points and they present in front of the other uh, participants. And then the, the trainer will show the some 
principle of the safety in health and show the good example, the good practice collected from the other region, other country, or the other village. And then after that, they, they repeated the small group discussion to find out three good points and three points to be improved. And it's repeated for the four or five different technical uh, area. For example, the material handling or the chemical safety, something like that. And the last session, the each development, uh, the participant is developing the, the action plans of the, their, their own workplace. And one month later, three months later, or six months later, the trainer visit their, or, uh, their participants' workplace and check if they implement their work plan, action plan. And if they cannot implement the action plan, they support and act, uh, advise, uh, provide advice how to implement the action plan. So this is action checklist exercise. The left one is in Laos, perhaps in the wind for the small scale workers. And the right uh, photo is the Mongolia for the Wiscon, the small, uh, small construction site. And this is a small group discussion, the, the Senegal for wind, the small scale workers. And the right one is the, perhaps in Thailand, I think. And this is the technical presentation. The, the left one is the labor inspector comes to the community and provide the technical presentation. And the right one is the, the he is the farmer volunteer as a trainer. He is providing some, some technical presentation. And this is the presentation of idea. The left one, the right one is the temple. Thailand, usually we use the, the very simple, uh, very reasonable venue for the training, temple, the community center, sometimes the individual house or something. And uh, the last session, development of action plan, you see this is the, the wind program in Vietnam. Usually we invite the participant, two participants from one workplace or in case of the, the wind program, two person from the household. Usually it's the pair of the wife and the husband. The first uh, wind program, we invite one person from household and usually they send the husband. And they developed a very good action plan, but when came back to the, the, the home, they cannot implement any action plan, why? because they need support from the wife. Otherwise, they cannot do anything. So we change, we, yes, it is the reality. Not only for the farmers in <laughs> Vietnam, but everywhere. So we need to invite both husband and wife, or the employer and worker, the pair. And the last one, the photo is the follow-up visit by the trainer. So. This is the, yeah, this is the one example. Before, the, Mirai already showed us the, some example, but before, in this workplace, the hazard is perhaps this low materials. It's just behind. And some hazard and risks to step down or the, the slippery. Or the, but after the, the training, just move the materials over the head. No cost, low cost, just move. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good uh, example. And this one in the wind program in Vietnam, before the farmer spread the chemicals like this, but after he developed this equipment using the materials available at their own place. Actually, there is almost no cost. And uh, by the way, this equipment is very famous in this village. And he wants to get the patent for his you know, invention. So it's now is the very, you know, uh, he is another business. And the important thing is the ILO or the donor does not provide any money to make improvement. The improvement should be made using the available materials at their own cost. 
So that is another point to sustain activity. If we provide money, when the money budget is cut, there's nothing. But the, the idea is to self step ownership of the improvement. And uh, the sharing good practice and achievement with national authority for the other country, other region is very important. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, the time is up. Uh, actually, the wind in Vietnam, so far, they have 28,000 improvement. We provide supported 8,000 uh, farmers get training, and they made almost 30,000 improvement. We have to share that kind of, of course, it's very simple. It's not the, the, the sophisticated safety and health improvement, but it works. And wind is, uh, farmers activity is across the world. So in response to this worldwide activities, recently we produced the global wind manual, global wind guidance. So this is very useful. And almost this is my last slide, but to ensure sustainability, we need to get some support from the national authority at the policy level. In terms of the Vietnam in wind program, the good thing is based on the successful implementation at village level and district level, government recognized the needs and the importance of this kind of activity, and they adopt the new pro program, new uh, strategy at national level and introduce the wind as the national requirement for the every workers, every farmers. The same thing for Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan get the wind as, the, as a priority of the decent work country program. So this is my last slide. We need this kind of activities, coordination between the national level and workplace level, and wind power is the bottom up approach. But still we need the support from the top level. And we need to inv involve government employers workers as well as community. So thank you very much and sorry I know about the time. <laughs>